You know what would be cool? Alexa, turn on the key light. Sorry, I didn't find a group or device named key light. Something that could connect to Alexa, you know, controlling your studio lights also with Alexa. I mean, it's possible you can do it with a plug, but still maybe a light that connects to Alexa directly. As you can guess, today we are going to talk about lights, about some portable, capable, innovative lights. To be honest, setting up main lights every time when you shoot a video is kind of hustle. And I was trying to find a solution at the same time, make a video for YouTube. And I failed while I was filming that. Anyways, today we're going to talk about small lights, also known as pocket lights. Unlike a main light, small portable pocket lights are so handy and very helpful in a set. For instance, in my case, I'm using one of them as a fill light, another one as a backlight. I know, if you want better lightning, you have to have bigger source of light as necessary. But small portable lights can be very handy, at the same time you can go creative with them, because you can use them as a practical light and make your shots look much more pleasant. Let's take a look closer. If I remove this, you can tell there's a significant change on this side of my face. As you can tell, it's approximately 50 centimeters away from my face and it's only on 12% to 15%. The backlight I'm using at the moment is newer RGB1, which I've already reviewed in this channel and I'm going to leave a link here if you haven't watched that. But the fill light is from Jiyun and it has been only two weeks with me. Although it's two weeks, it has become one of my most favorite pocket lights for a few reasons. Not saying the most favorite, one of my most favorite because it has some advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to go through all these details after a few seconds, just bear with me. So very briefly about the specs. And then I'm going to talk about advantages and disadvantages. And then I'm going to challenge myself and create five different scenes with one single light. Before diving into details, let's see if it passed the pocket size standard test. Well, almost. The design is very minimalistic and I would say it feels really premium quality when you hold it in your hands. They use only two knobs to control the brightness and the Kelvin. By the way, Kelvin changed from 2700 up to 6200 and they placed also LED indicator here which shows how much battery left. There's another piece which attached to the main body is the rubber softener which works pretty well, for example in this case. By the way, I replaced this one with another portable pocket light and that one I have already more than a year, but that one is 100% and that's almost a half, okay, almost a half size of this one. So 100%, 15%, so you can imagine, but that's not the point. I was trying to say that this rubber softener helps you to get more pleasant and soft light on a subject or an object and in my case if you realize that it was almost as soft as the main light in 10%. I'll put the exact dimensions here but for now you can see how small is this. It's smaller than my hand and this small light has 112 high brightness lamp beads which gives you 25 watts of power in total and according to the manufacturer the maximum illumination is 4620 lux in a controlled environment probably in the laboratory or in Gerald's laboratory. My other pocket light is in 100%, which gives more or less same amount of light when it was in 15%. Now you can imagine this one in 100%. Of course that comes with some heat, and for that reason, Jim put a big fan behind of it. They use their newest intelligent cooling system, which is called DynaWord cooling system, which is really, really silent. And the cooling design or cooling system design is done pretty well. They don't put only here, but they put some spaces or gaps while they designed it 
so the cooling system can work really efficiently and silently. I haven't checked the batteries manually, I mean I haven't attached any tool that can measure how long does it take to empty a fully charged battery or I haven't turned it on waited until it gets off but according to the manufacturer it has two or double 2000 milliampere batteries which can take up to 35 minutes if you turn it on and increase the brightness up to 100%. Well, if you want to increase the battery life, don't use it in 100%, put in 25% with the rubber. What I also like about design and ergonomics is that they put knobs on the same side and you can operate them only with one finger, which is cool. And right next to the knobs, there's a Type-C charging port with power delivery which means you can charge it while using and also keep it in 100% as long as you have a type-c cable and a power bank or a battery or different type of source of energy by the way i really appreciate your support and thank you very much for sending this one for reviewing on this channel you can also support my channel by liking commenting subscribing or sharing i also left the link in the description if you don't want to miss the discount you can go through their website or amazon and get one of them with 10 percent discount here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. These small pocket side lights are meant to be versatile. And I'm not talking about functions such as RGB option or effects. I'm talking about ergonomics. Unfortunately, this one has only one one quarter inch screw hole right at the bottom. You know, it will be nice to have one more when you attach on your rig. Sometimes you have to have more than one hole so you can turn it around easily. Beside this one quarter inch screw hole, there could be more tools attached to the main body and those would make this unbeatable. Let's start with the first one, which is in my opinion, is the magnetic attachment. Okay, let's assume GM didn't put that magnetic feature just because it's heavy, 220 grams. But I think there are some magnets which could easily hold 220 grams. So that doesn't look like a reason. In that case, I have the second question. How about an articulated arm or at least another screw hole? And the second one is the RGB option. I know if you add the RGB lamp bits, it becomes completely different light and it would affect, of course, the price and the other things. But the effects, I think those could be at. That doesn't really require big engineering on this one. So obviously there are some missing points in terms of ergonomics. According to Gion, the manufacturer, the CRI value is over 96 and the TLCI is more than 97 which gives me this opinion that by avoiding effects and RGB options, Gion is trying to focus more on the quality and the brightness, which means you can pair them with their higher or more professional lights. Perhaps that's why they call it Cinepier. About the product, to be more specific about the design ergonomics and the functions, I have no more to say. I have no comments. If I find out more, I'll come up with another short. But for now, I think I'm done. And it's time to switch to five different shots with a single light. So for the first shot, I used the Snapier over the top. I mounted it here on my shelf and put extra diffuser in front of it because it's going to be a little bit close up shot. And here, I use Snapier again with the same articulating arm attached to the stairs and pointed to the white wall so I can get even softer light. So Here I shot in two versions uh, with a diffuser in front of the Cinepier and without the diffuser. And I attached the Cinepier with an articulating arm on a chair and then I used the reflector on that side. That's it, that is clean.